Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video and this time we'll talk once again about logging but we'll talk about a topic that in my opinion is really underestimated when I look into how different applications actually do their logging and this is the concept of logger scopes in ASP.NET Core which is actually very 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 useful but I see it very very often in action and hopefully after this video this will change because I think that after you will see how powerful this concept of logger scopes is, you will use it more often in your applications. But before we really get started with logging scopes, let's get uh, to understand exactly what the problem actually, or what problem this concept of logger scopes comes to, to solve for us. And remember that we have here our solution that we actually used for our entire, or for all our videos on logging, so you might already be familiar with that and the last time out we implemented some structured logging here for instance like we see here that the request was received by the controller but uh, and specify a certain date time which is actually the first information log that we write here when we execute this api method and we have of course others uh, structured logging here and we also have configured serilog because we are using serilog right now to use seek as a sync, so to send all the logs to a seek server. Now, what I have done previously, I have run this application and I have executed a method here, or I have executed this API method that we have implemented or where we have our logging. And we see that we can see here all the logs that we have implemented in our application. And let's take a deeper look here at this one. As said, we have used structured logging, so we have specified a property for controller and then we have provided the value for the weather forecast controller because that was the place where we were actually doing the logging and here if we look into the parameters that we see here in seek we have this controller so this is then a property because actually behind it is a json property that we can use for instance to search here in seek and filter for logs that have a certain value for the property controller then we have this action get and we have this controller action property that we also have provided with our structured logging and in this case it was the get and then we have the date time and once again that's the date time property so we can filter and search logs for uh, let's say logs that happened or that that registered a date time that is for instance in a certain range which will be fairly fairly useful and that's okay but if we take a closer look at this we realize actually that all the parameters that we have and that we can actually search for or filter for are part of the log message that we have sent but otherwise we see that there are other information or other parameters that were added by microsoft or by serilog here so we can also search for them but then the question comes okay how can i actually do the same so when i do log something I just want to add some contextual information to my log that is actually not part of the log message itself. And here's actually where this concept of logging scopes come in. And let's take a look here and refactor a bit our code to take advantage of this concept of logging scopes. Actually, that's very, very easy to achieve. It's not complicated at all because we can simply say here we have here a using and we can say here logger dot begin scope and that's a method that's exposed actually by ilogger now of course what we can do is let's let's move actually everything here into the scope of this using statement so that will be uh, here so everything should be fine for now now, the idea of this begin scope is that you would have to provide here some information that, that kind of like would be the state and here, uh, controller logger. We just have to provide here an object. In this case, we have provided a string and the begin scope method is actually then correct. So we could already log things. However, this begin scope or the scope in an iLogger is actually a way of grouping different logs and add to them, or if you want to add to them, to all of them, for instance, some additional information, some contextual information that might be useful, but that is maybe not part of the log message itself. 
So in this case, we can simply use this begin scope and then provide here some information. Now, I said this begin scope, actually, well, we can provide here a string, but we can even provide here, for instance, an object. And the cool thing that we can do here is that if we provide here to the begin scope a dictionary of string and object, it would actually add all these type of key value pairs to our logs so we would be able to see them or and to filter and search logs for them without them being a part of the log message itself. So let's try to kind of set this up here. So what we'll do here, it's very, very simple. We will add a private method. So let's make it private. It would return a dictionary of string and object. And let's call this a get scope information. And what we'll do here is var uh, scope uh, info equals new dictionary. Dictionary. Okay, I still have a typo here. So dictionary of uh, string object. Okay, that's that's what I need. I'm cool with that. And let's try to add here something. So it would be scope info dot add. And one important thing that you might want to capture really in all your logs, especially if you're running your applications on multiple nodes, is where exactly your application is currently running. So I would have here a machine name as a property and the keys that you specify here will be actually the JSON properties and the values that you specify here would be the values. And here we can, for instance, say environment and uh, hopefully if I typed it correctly, uh, that should be okay. But I guess something is wrong. Yeah, here, I guess I'm missing an N here. So let's try it out right now uh, using Microsoft extensions hosting. Uh, so yeah, it could be that environment, uh, but no, this is also not okay. Uh, so sorry, just one second. It would be system environment. It's okay, it's okay right now. Okay, so let's uh, use here the machine name on that. I guess just Visual Studio is, is really, really slow to adapt to changes. And let's say here, return scope info. So that would do it. But let's add also some other information here, like add one other thing that we would maybe like to have here is maybe environment. And that would be if it is development or testing, practically we could inject here the I configuration and take the information from there or the I hosting. Uh, so we can then here in this case, let's say it's just development. But you get the idea, we can have this dynamically via service. Uh, so we don't have to hard code any stuff here. And let's add another thing here, which would be the app name, because it could be that in a certain logging system, uh, that you might use, for instance, for more applications, that all applications would send uh, their logs there. So in this case, we would need to be able to find a way to filter only the logs for one certain application. And in this case, let's call this logging scopes. So that would be okay. Now, the only thing that we would have to do is now add this in this begin scope, just execute this or just invoke this get scope information get scope information that would be cool so this would then return this key value pair or well dictionary to our logging scope and right now if we run the application it takes just one second it will probably open on a different screen so i'll i'll just make a request i guess i don't really need to bring this up but okay it opens already here so Let's make the request here in our application to our weather forecast controller. So we got here the results. So that's everything that we need for now. Let's then head over to our Seek server and let's do a refresh. Right now we see that we have all these logs once again because we have a new request. But if we compare this one with this one, we see that we have this app name that we have added to our logging scope. And then we have this machine name 
which we also have added to our scope. And then we'll also have the environment, which we all have added to our scope. And here, all this information is missing. So we don't have it there. Now, by the only fact that we have created a logging scope there, and we have grouped all our logs to actually belong to that scope and then add all the information to all of them, you see that once again, we have environment, we have machine name, and then we also have the app name. And if we go to this other one, because all the other logs come from a service where we haven't implemented yet a uh, structured logging. So if we go here to action ID, uh, sorry, to action name, uh, app name, we see the app name, then we have the machine name, and we also have uh, the environment. So everything's actually very, very cool. Uh, but right now we see that we have the machine name and environment and app name also to our services. So logs that were actually performed in our service, not directly in our controller. So how did that even happen? And of course, nothing is magic. Everything has a real clear uh, explanation. The idea is that we have created a scope here. So the scope still exists for this exact instance of the iLogger. Now, as long as the scope exists and it was not disposed, it will actually use all the information that you provide in that scope when it performs the logging. Now, as we are within this scope, so the scope is not disposed yet, we have this result and we call this service process uh, temperature. So if we go to that, we have a lot of different logs or and even if we have not provided here a, a scope for that, as we already were in the scope in the controller to all these logs, we also have that type of information that we have added to our login scope. So this is something that you would have to maybe take in consideration when you kind of like try to implement logging scopes, maybe implement them uh, at a higher level, especially if you add some very, very specific information that would be the same or should be added to virtually all logs that you might have uh, in your application. Uh, make sure to really uh, just uh, understand this idea that the scope is valid and is, it's actually used until it's disposed. So if you log with other loggers, the scope is still there. Uh, the abstraction is the same. So those loggers will actually also use that scope if it was not disposed. So that's something that you would probably have to take into consideration when working with logging scopes. But regarding this topic, probably we will create a new video very, very soon and explain why we think that it's actually a very good idea to create your own logging abstraction in ASP.NET Core applications that would wrap the iLogger. Because in that case, you would have a central place where you could actually um, take control of the logging scopes that you want for your application and when you dispose them or how you dispose them and so on and so forth. But for this basic concept of getting started or understanding this logging scope and why it is important when it comes to logs that are actually structured and when we want to be able to search for certain logs and do more extensive queries on logs based on criteria that we have actually in our properties and in our values, then logging scopes are really very important and can save you a lot of time when it comes to maintain your application or to fix bugs. That is really, really vital. And yeah, that was a very, very short one, but that's actually all about how these logging or logger scopes work in ASP.NET Core. If you find this content useful, don't be shy and hit the thumbs up button, get involved uh, in the comments, and of course, subscribe to the Code Wrinkles channel if you didn't do this already. And if you want to go one step further, you can even spread the word, share the content with people that you think might find this also useful and helpful. So this being said, thank you very, very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.